Okay guys, welcome to Million Dollar Batchmaker, and today, we're going to- Oh, oh, hold on. Let's take off these goggles, very important to doing any chemistry. Anyway, we're going to learn how to write a cosmetic formula, covering what to do and what not to do. It's gonna be fun, so let's get started. Okay, so let's jump right in. Pro tip number one, when making a cosmetic formula, the first thing you wanna do is make sure your formula has a proper name and proper versioning if necessary. Here, we have a bad example of this topic. You can see that the customer name and the product name for this lotion are kind of ambiguous. It just indicates that this batch is for a YouTube or a YouTuber. Moreover, we don't know if there were previous versions of this same formula. That information can be very helpful. If say, your customer wanted to switch to an older version of a formula or wanted to modify an older formula. Also, there is no date when the formula was created or at least modified. On this improved version of the formula, we have what I consider a good header for your cosmetic formula. The customer for this formulation is clear and the name of the product as well as the version of the formula is clearly listed. Also important is the fact that we have a date for the creation of the formula. Pro tip number two. Make sure that all of your formula percentages add up to 100%. Here in our bad example, we are making 250 kilos of a lotion and it requires 68.396% of water, 0.4% of guar gum, 0.3% of hanthanol, etc, etc. The weight is obtained by multiplying the percentage by the quantity 250. However, as we scroll to the bottom, we can see that the total percentages for all the ingredients add up to 103.5%. What's the deal with that? And the quantity total is 256 instead of 250 like we originally had. Here is our improved formula. we can see that we have the same 250 kilo batch with the same percentages we encountered before. And they calculate the same weights. However, this time we can see that all the percentages add up to 100% as they should. Pro tip number three. Do not mix units of measurement, just stick to one. Here on our bad formula example, we have a formula that at first appears to have measurements in liters, but then, uh oh, you have grams mixed in there, teaspoons, and also drops, which isn't even a real unit of measurement. And now, here in our good example, we can see right from the title of the weight column, that the unit of measurement is kilograms for everything. And this way, we don't even have to put the unit of measure next to each weight calculation. How neat is that? Pro tip number four, use trade names whenever possible. Now, before we go into the details of this tip, let's review what exactly trade names are. A trade name in this case is kind of like a brand name given to a chemical or chemical mixture. It signifies that a chemical is uniquely created or processed by a particular company. On the other hand, a chemical name is simply a common chemical name as stated by the International Nomenclature of Cosmetic Ingredients or INCI for short. 
Now, the important thing to remember is that trade names are very specific to a company or a specific processing method. Whereas inky names are very general and describe a chemical more broadly. For example, here we have a preservative called phenoxyethanol, and this name is called the inky name. However, this name, G side phenoxy, is also phenoxyethanol, except it is processed and prepared by a company called Gene International. Now, here in our bad formula, we can see that this person, like most people, simply put the inky name of the chemical or they write down a mix of inky and trade names. Instead, I encourage you to write down the trade names whenever possible so you know exactly where each ingredient comes from. This especially comes in handy where inky name is very long, where the inky name is very long like here and here. Here in our good example, we have a much better ingredient layout. We have the inky names in their own column, and we have the trade names in the column to the left. For even further clarity, we've even included a vendor column to show you exactly where everything was sourced. Pro tip number five, break your formula up into phases. Taking a look at our bad formulation, we can see that certain ingredients seem to be grouped together, although it doesn't explicitly say so. Are these groupings arbitrary? Hell no. In fact, these ingredients are grouped by phase. A phase in a cosmetic formula is simply a section of a formula where related chemicals are organized. For example, these chemicals are all dissolved in water, hence it's called the water phase, phase A. These chemicals are all soluble in oil, thus it's called the oil phase, phase B. And these chemicals are all involved in preservation, thus why we call it a preservation phase, phase C. Here in the good formulation, we can see that phases are clearly identified by letter A, B, C, and D with each one representing either chemicals that perform a different function or are chemically related. And with that, let's turn to pro tip number six. Write a clear and concise procedure for your formulation. I can't tell you how critical this is. No matter how awesome your formula is, a terribly written procedure is a good way to make sure that your product is never made properly. Here, we have an example of a good procedure. First, you'll notice that the procedure is organized by phase. And your whole goal with the procedure is to be very exacting so you don't leave ambiguity about how to make this formula properly. Therefore, we use exact temperatures in Celsius here, here, and here. Also, we should be very specific about the final state of each phase by using phrases like until fully absorbed or until mixture is smooth in texture to give someone a visual check as they move through the formula. And now for the very last pro tip, pro tip number seven. Vet all your ingredients using industry standards and regulations. And this is a very common practice among cosmetic chemists because cosmetic ingredients fall in and out of favor all the time because of scientific research and public perception. I'll take you through two ways you can start doing this. First, we have here the Prop 65 list. You may have heard of the Prop 65 list as the list of ingredients California lawmakers have decided should not be sold in the state of California as part of consumer goods. And like it or not, avoiding chemicals on this list does indicate to many consumers that your product is aligned with the goals of better health and wellness. The same goes for the Whole Foods list. This is a list of chemicals that Whole Foods prohibits its personal care and cosmetic brands from utilizing. No matter what you're feeling about these lists, they do set a health and quality standard for many people. 
And that's it for today, guys. Hope you learned something. Until next time, this is Million Dollar Batchmaker signing off.